Hello, everyone, and thank you. We're very happy that you joined us for this webinar. My name is Monica. I'm the Customer Success Manager here at Brain Buffet. And with me, um, there's the great Stephen Linkings. He's our senior web developer. He fixes most of the bugs and issues with the platform. So he's here to answer any platform questions. And we also have Patchy Hatfying. She is our product manager. So any doubts about any courses, releases that will be answered by her. And yeah, so we have an amazing team for this webinar session. Uh, please feel free to make any questions through the chat or you can open your mic and just make the questions as we go. Um, before we begin, this session was meant to, to be help you create classrooms for those who didn't know yet, we're also going to go through the teacher resources uh, that are avail available in the platform, such as like downloading the course progress or the quiz uh, mm -hmm. report. Um, so before that, I just want to ask how many of you are new to the platform and to using Brain Buffet? Because uh, also somebody already has been using it for some years. I'm new. Knox is new. Okay. Catherine and uh, Lindsay, have you used Brain Buffet before? In the chat, both saying new. Okay. Great. So we're going to go through that real quick. Yeah. I'm a number. I haven't used it at all. In fact, is um, I'm All right, uh, so the idea is for us to walk through step by step so you can set your classrooms uh, alongside with me. But if you don't have your computer here, like, don't worry, this webinar is being recorded and you can access it later. You can just listen and see what are the resources available in case you need them in the future. So if you're a new teacher, you should have received an email much like this one, okay? So you're a new teacher, welcome to Brain Buffet. Here's the information of the package that your school got, the courses that you have been given to teach. Um, and here will be your login credentials if you have never used Brain Buffet before, a new account will be created for you. If you have, um, you can always access the uh, reset password option when you log in. Okay, so here are going to be your credentials, your password, your login. And after that, you should be set to start. Uh, we're going to start from the dashboard. Right here. So to set your classroom. Um, before setting the classroom, there's an important thing. It's called assigning licenses. There are license managers. They have all access to all the licenses and they will add the teachers and will assign those teachers licenses. This is important to be done every year after the renewal of the package is done. Okay, otherwise the teachers won't have access to licenses and you won't be able to create classrooms. Okay, so we are assuming from this point that this has been done by the license manager. There's usually one license manager per school. There can be more. Um, if you would like to do that sort of thing in your school, you can always ask, request that from your license manager, and they can also add other license managers. They have that ability in case they are not able to do it all the time. So here is the My Class page. Here's where you create your classroom, and here's where you have all your teaching resources. Okay, when you click here to add a new classroom, up here, you will see how many licenses you have been assigned. So I have been assigned 101 licenses. And here are the packages that I have access to. Some people may have access to uh, the Elite here. CP Elite is the Adobe package with all the courses. The MOS is the one with all the Microsoft courses. So depending on the package that you have been assigned and what courses you'll be teaching, this is what you will have to choose before creating the classroom. I mean, to create the classroom, you will have to choose one of those that will give all the students that you add to the classroom access to those courses. Is that clear? 
So when you create a classroom, you need to choose a package if you have more than one. If you have only one, then you can just leave it as it is and it will give a, that classroom access to those courses, okay? So I'm gonna name this classroom animation three because I already have animation two and I'm gonna assign here licenses. This is actually very important. This is the total amount of licenses I need for that classroom. So if I'm gonna have a classroom with 35 students, currently there's only 20, but I know more will come. Maybe I will put here 35. I'll go a little bit over, or I can always change this number, but we recommend that you always put a little bit more rather than a little less. You can reassign this ones afterwards. So it's better to put a little over than a little less. I'm just gonna go with 20 licenses for now and just gonna click on add classroom. Okay, click here to refresh data. And that's it, the classroom is created. And now I just have to add the students to it. All right. In here, I can see the courses that this classroom has access to. So it's all Adobe courses. Um, from here, I can view the link to the classroom, okay? This link will give uh, anyone who clicks on it, has access to it, will give access to the classroom, okay? This is one of the, um, it's the most popular way that we have for adding students because usually students' emails are blocked to receiving emails from outsources. So this way they just click the link and they will have these options here. If they already have an account, they can log into the account and they will just click on join this group. Okay, if they don't have an account, uh, this here will appear for them. And they will put their name, their last name, and account will be created for them. Um, that will be it for the link use. So this is the best way for adding students because they will add themselves to the classroom. And in here, you can just delete the classroom in case if you got them piled up from other years or different sem semesters, you can just delete them from there, okay? These are your options from the class information uh, tab here on the My Class page. Okay, we're gonna go through this part here. Let me see if I can put the pencil. Yes, we're gonna go through this options here. Uh, so you can see all that is there. Available. I'm sorry, I, I heard something. Can I just ask a quick question? Yes. You, you, did you just show where you could delete old classrooms? I missed that. I have multi screens. Uh, yes, here. There's a trash can next to the classroom. I don't Would have you... that on my dashboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I don't have that on my dashboard. And I'm the license manager, so that's why. Mm, okay. Yeah. That might be, you said you've been with Bring Buffet for a few years, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That could be because you have an older account and some of the older data might not contain that. We can definitely fix that for you and make that up. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if there's any way to wipe out globally, any of the old um, classrooms, uh, but I could keep, if I could keep the four teachers, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, can you go ahead and type your email in the, that you use for Bring Buffet in the chat here and I'll go ahead and check that out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for sure, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Steven. You see the display, he's the great and the one. <laughs> All right, Um. so those are the options. And one last thing, uh, in here you can manage the seats. So remember we put 20 here. Do you need to change this number in the future? All you have to do is click here, manage seats, and you add the new number. Remember that this is the total number of students within that group. So if I want to add two students, I'm not going to write two. I'm going to write 22. because That's the total amount of students I need there. You click on Save Changes and refresh that. Um, in here, I can see the, the number of students that have uh, enrolled in this classroom. So this is our new classroom, Animation 3, and I have no students enrolled here. I only have assigned 22 seats, okay? If I don't have any seats available, when the uh, students click on join the classroom and the classroom link, this is the message that they will get. Not enough seats to join the classroom. 
if you have been with us for some time, you might have encountered this situation. All you need to do to fix that is um, add more seats here. So um, yeah, you just manage seats here and make sure there's a number here. If the number is zero, that's the message they're gonna get. If it, the number is one, they will be able to join. Monica, okay. there's a question from Catherine uh, on the chat. Perfect, let me see. Do the students sign on with the classroom Mac computers or can they create their account on their laptop? Yes, uh, the account is not created on the computer itself. It's on the website. So it's brainbuffet.com. They can access from any browser. Um, yeah, so if they don't have an account, when they click on the link, uh, this is the message that will appear to them, okay? So they can create their account through here if they don't have an account. If they already have an account, they just have to log in and click on join this group, okay? If they don't remember the password, they can always select the option of uh, reset password, okay? Do we have any questions from this part of the page, the class information? I should actually mention something else. Up here, we have the welcome videos. Can, we see? No. can you see it? So if you open here, you will have some tutorials, okay? So how to register students, how to remove them, how to reset their passwords, student packets, instructor files. All of this is right here. These are short videos made to help you get going here. And we have a little bulletin board here that's updated weekly with our events, webinar, or new releases. All of that will be here for you to be updated. And if this section is bothering you, you can just click here and collapse section. And it's available here whenever you need it. Okay. All right. Then we're gonna be moving on to the next option here, the student roster. From here, you have access to the students that are enrolled into each classroom. And that's, you can enroll them, and remove them, re-invite them, send them an email again. And you can also reset their password. So let's say Hunter doesn't remember anymore his password, like that's fine, I could just put here. Hunter, one, two, three, four, five. And okay, that's it. The, uh, the password was changed. I just have to let him know and he can um, log into his account without an issue. And these are the options that you have available for those students that you have already, that have already been enrolled in your classroom. If they are not enrolled in your classroom, you will not see them here, okay? This is the roster of the classrooms. Here you can choose which classroom you wanna see. So I have two classrooms, animation two and animation three. In animation three, uh, I don't have any students yet, remember? So from here, I can enroll them as well, but I'll have to do it manually. So here I can just write one student's name, email, and sorry, this is the middle. Yeah, and I can just add that user right there. Or if I have more than one student they are, that already has a, has an account, I can just export that roster and upload it here at once. Here I have a sample CSV for you to know what information needs to be there. And it looks a little bit like this. Okay, so we have first name, last name, and their email. That's all. So I'm gonna upload one here so you guys can see. Um, here. Upload, that's it. These users already had an account, so I was able to invite them this way, to add them to my classroom this way. If they didn't have an account, they would receive an email and they could choose to join through the email. But if their emails blocked from receiving emails from outside sources, they won't receive the email. That's why the link is always the best option because then they can create the classroom and uh, they can create their account and there's no need for them to receive an email. All right. Do we have any questions about this part of the dashboard? 
No. All right. Um, yeah. Then moving on, we have the instructor files. Here you have all the instructor files for all the courses that you have been uh, enrolled into as a teacher. So here I have the MOS because I, I am part of the MOS package and I am also part of the uh, full suit package that I have here that will be courses. All right, so um, I have two other courses, one from Autodesk Fusion and Project Management Ready. I can just click here on the course that I want to see the files from. I have the Microsoft option, the OneDrive, and the Google Drive. I can choose whichever. I need to have an account to log in. And here I will have the lesson plans, uh, the student work and answer keys. The lesson plans will be divided by uh, module or project. And here I have all the files. Okay, so to access that is very simple. Here on the side, instructor files, okay? To whichever you, course. Uh, I have Monica, access. do you mind opening the, opening one of the lesson plans just so that the teachers that are new, they know a little bit what to expect. So uh, the lesson plan is to give you um, um, a vision of what that module will be teaching. So you have the scenario, the goal for that module, the names of all videos, the, the duration, the concepts that are key that they're, they're going to be learning, um, the objective domains that are connected to that specific module is always there. Uh, and we also have some um, rubric that can help you and guide how you want to grade your students when they are working on the worksheets. Uh, we do have our uh, self the the platform grading for the quizzes uh and the each the questions that pop up in the video but this is more connected to the project the hands-on uh and we always uh suggest that there the software is open and the students are following along uh, the amazing part of having brain buffet as a good tool for you is that the, each student can learn at their own pace uh and you can go around and help them wherever they're at. And so if they're ready to go deeper or do a little bit more of work with, you know, the worksheets and some projects, we have also started files uh, or, or finished files that will look on your way, all the answer keys, everything you have access through this um, that Monica is showing right now. Um. Yes, because depending on the software that you're using, the files that you will need. In this case, we have Photoshop. So let's go for the first one, project one. And here we have a folder just with finished files. Okay, so this is what their products should look like. So in case you don't know how to use Photoshop, you, you have just been assigned this task, but that's okay. Here is what you should look for your students uh, work, okay? So we have the images here and you can compare these to the ones that they are doing. Okay, you can see it through here. Focuses PSD file. And if you're wondering like, what was it that it looked before, it looked like before for the student, uh, you can also access that. If we go back to the teacher files. Okay, I go back from here. So I'm just going to open it again. So I can go from here. I have the student resources and the teacher files. In the teacher files, you will have all of those materials. But if you want to see what your students are working with and on, um, these are the, the files that are made available for the students to work on. So here you have the original images of the ones we just saw. So they'll be working on this ones, but I think, okay, here. Mm -hmm. So it's different from the final product. And here you can see, so you can compare that in case you need to do that. But mostly you would just need this, the finished files to check their progress and check that they're doing 
the work as they're supposed to. Um, maybe we can, if we have time, we can go through the the videos themselves, talk a little about um, how they're created and why they're created. If we have time for that, we also want to leave some time for Q&A at the end. Do we have any questions about the instructor files? No? Great. So here we have the course progression. Here we'll check the progress from each student and uh, each student has that has been enrolled into our classroom. So here we will select the classroom. Here we'll select the course. So we're going to be working on Photoshop. And here I can see their progress. Okay, this is an overall progression overview. And here on the side, I can see the topics completed. And here you will select a specific project. So let's be working on project two, Anna de Ballerina, progression overview. We're going to go to topics completed to see how many videos they have seen. Okay, I can see they have seen all of them. That's great. Let's go to project four to check their progress there. Okay, I can see they have finished. Oh, for example, I can see that John hasn't finished project four and I can go here and I can see that too. They're, they're not check marked. Um, in case I need to talk with a student, I can always use this options here. So if I click this one, I will hide the other students. So I can just call them up and I can show them this and we can talk about it without having them see the progress of the other students. So I'm just going to talk to them about their own progress. Okay, here I can see the course competition percentage, the ratio of the specific project, and the topic we're talking about that was last completed. Um, this is the hide other students option. I also have the detail report, the detail user report option. It will look a little bit like this. In this case, I open Hunters. I can see uh, how many classrooms they are part of. And I can see which courses they have been working on. So in this case, I can see they have worked on After Effects and on Photoshop. Photoshop, they're 60%, 65%, yes, finished. And in After Effects, I think there's a number of topics, I'm sorry, that they have completed. And here I can see the percentage. Yes, Photoshop is 56%, and After Effects is completed. 100%. I can download the certificate for here. I can also see all of their quiz activity. Um, so how many attempts they have had, what's the percentage they got on each attempt. I can see all of this on their detailed user report. Okay, right here. I'll just open it so it would be, it would take less to charge load and everything. I can also, from this page, I can check things myself. So if, for example, I know one of them cheated on the answers, because <laughs> sometimes it happens, I can just go here and manually uncheck these so they have to do it again. The same is... The same works, uh, it works the other way around as well. So if I know they have done it, but they're not checking it for some reason, or there's some problem with their computer, I can just come here and check them myself. But it's for specific situations, that's why it's not as convenient to check everything or not. It's just for that sort of specific situation. All right, um, and that would be the course progression tab almost, because <laughs> you also have the option to uh, export all of this data. Okay, so if I need to pass it on to somewhere else, I can just click here and export data. I have this two options here. I'm going to show you how it looks like. Um, lesson report. Okay, so this is for the project two. Most of them had finished it. So here in project competition, it's marked as one. And the ones I haven't done is marked as zero. Okay. 
here I can see the total percentage of the course of uh, progress. Okay, this is for project two. So most of my class is already over with that one. So I moved on to project four for you to see the difference. So here I can see that these students have not finished this project yet, which is not a problem. I can see up to when did they finish. So they did up to the 4.5. Uh, 4.6 wasn't done here by Steve. I can see the total course, course progress through here and the specific project percentage here too. Okay, this is when I download, again, it's, there's two ways to download this. You can download it as a provisional review or as topics completed. This is the topics completed CSV file. Okay, it looks a little like this. And here is the overall overview, overall progression overview, yes. So it looks a little like this. They only have the course progress, the completion. So if they finish that project, specific project that I clicked on, it won't show me the specific topics. It will just go over the project itself. Do we have any questions from this tab here? And check the chat. Okay. So let's move on to the quiz reports. Quiz reports is the same thing as in to select the classroom, select the course. And here you select the project they're working on. Okay, again, you have the same options, hide other students, view detail report, report. And here you can download their certificate if they have finished the course. Not course anymore. Okay, so none of them have finished it, so it's not gonna show up here. That option's not gonna show up. But I can go through it. All right. And I can um download this data, it will look a little bit like this. I got some other options. So here I can see the number of attempts they have done. So we have three students that have done it and Max here tried to do it two times. So the first one, they got one right. The second time they got two right. The quiz score was 20%. They need up to 80% to pass the quiz. If they don't get up to 80%, the course will never be marked as completed. So they won't be able to retrieve the certificate of completion. Okay, and I can use this for grading or I can use the, the lesson report progress for rating. Like that's really up to you. We have both options and you can export both of them. Mm. I am missing one thing. This should be here. But that would be it for the tools that are available here from the My Class page. Uh, if you yourself have an issue with your email or with your password, you want to change it, you can just come here, down here at the My Account page. And you can change that right here. Here in account details, you can change your password, okay? Current password, new password, save changes, okay? It's very simple, it's down here. If you need to change, because you change your name or something, it's all available there. Okay. Do we have any questions from the My Class page tabs? or tools that we went through? No, okay. Um, I think we went through everything on this dashboard. We could open for Q and A or... Yes, do we, do we have any other questions? Uh, also, we have uh, a free PD opportunity coming on September 7th. 
And we would like to invite you all. That's for Adobe Photoshop. It's one hour and a half session. And it's connected to the, the latest on trends of the industry, tips for certification, um, a little bit of what's going on with AI, just so that you you know about what's going on with Photoshop. So that's September 7th, right, Monica? So here's the invite. And September and 5th. 5th. 5th, sorry, September 5th. <laughs> And the good news is that we will keep the recordings of every free PD session uh, for you to go back to at any time. So each month we'll have a different subject. Super interesting. And you can access that from your teacher dashboard. And are there any other license managers here just like John uh, or is it just John? Because perhaps we could answer your questions, John, if you have questions regarding uh, being a license manager at the end but i i think i think i'm okay um steve's been helping me and i i navigated i guess there's two different web links and i have i've been in the system so long I, but i did find where i can delete my um classes nice um, i guess i should have my teachers log in as themselves to delete classes. I don't see where I can do that from my end, which is fine. I mean, it's easy enough for me to have them delete it from their end. And then I can add them after the fact. I think it'll be okay. Hmm. As a license so manager, you shouldn't be able to uh, delete the teacher's classrooms. You can only delete your own classrooms. Okay. Makes sense. And again, for them to do it on their part. And some of my teachers... They kind of jump, they're a little bit, um, they jump the gun. I know like in Palm Beach County, we have a lot of issues with our firewall and all the security. And I kind of wait to see what's working. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll get with my teachers. There's only three other teachers that I, I think they've started some new classrooms. So I don't want to delete anything, even if I could, until I speak to them. So that that works fine with me. Yeah. As long as I know how to add them and everything seems pretty much the same as it was before. Um, mm -hmm. I basically copy that link. I throw it up on their Google Classroom. Um, and as you said, that link automatically puts them in the classroom. So it's pretty much automatic. Um, it looks like not much has changed. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And if there's any issue, like students not having access to the courses, you can always check the student roster to see if their name is there. If their name is okay. not there, they're not in the yeah. classroom. They won't have access to those courses. And I've used I've used where I reset their password. I, I we kind of dictate um, the pattern we want them to use for the username and password, but some of them don't listen. So we uh, we we do use that reset. And then the other thing that I like, what I guess was new last year, is being able to download the student resource files, because I'll download them on my end, <clears throat> and then I'll compress them and put them on the Google Classroom, because the folder size in our network, it'll crash before it ever downloads. So, but but it works it works fine that I do that. Yes, that, that option is available for all the folders there. You can just download them, even the teacher yeah. files. It helps mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. Especially yeah, that's actually interesting to, to hear that um, the large files were crashing the network because we might be able to implement some sort of um, option to download them as a zip, um, and hopefully that'll solve that issue for some people. So, I mean, if they're coming from Google Drive or from OneDrive, there might not be uh, an option to just do that, but we might be able to provide those zips. Granted, there's okay. not changes happening. So thank you for that feedback, actually. Especially with yeah. Adobe Premiere, the video files are so yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, so, I think our network, I'm not a network support person, but I think it almost has like a uh, timeout trigger where if yeah. something not you know the, the network will just close down whatever's um not opening in a timely manner yeah for yeah. sure that makes sense so especially with, like you said with those big video files yeah that's something to keep in mind 
and I was able to delete all my uh, old classrooms, so I'm good, and I I know what to show my people now. Awesome. Mm. Yep, you can definitely let us know. Um, this goes for everyone. You know, support at frameofay.com is the email address you can use to contact our support team. Or if you're, uh, we actually prefer if you can go to the website, we have a contact page where there's a form and that goes directly into our support system. So if you have any questions, you can reach us there. And also yeah. we have a chat feature now on the My Class page and on the license management dashboard. So anyone who's not a student can uh -huh. reach out to us directly through that as well. And Monica will be right on the other end of that. Oh, yeah, that's a great tool that we have now. This this is a new thing, John, this year. It's a live chat. And you can talk to Monica here if you okay. run into trouble. Thank you. Anytime. I'm just, uh, just as more of a curiosity thing. Is Rob Schwartz still involved at all or is he no longer? Yeah, he's he's a consultant for us. Okay. A good friend of um, the new president, very connected to the, the, the main people in the team. But he has retired. Okay, so yeah, he's... he was a he was a Palm Beach County teacher years ago and brought this oh. here. And I actually was telling one of my teachers that moved here from New York, being a little older back in the mid two thousands, there was something uh, Linda dot com, and that was a very similar web based um, tutorial. Mm -hmm. And Brain Buffet reminds me a lot of Linda dot com from way back in like oh five. So very great product. It really teaches them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Lindsay, I see that you want to have uh, early access to um, to Photoshop, and uh, because sometimes it takes a few days for the order to to come in, uh, we'll get your name and school here, Monica. Can you do mind writing down, and then we'll try to find out who is your certified rep. Um, oh, it's Ohio. It's Ohio, right? Uh, and then we can connect with them and see if we can get you early access to to the Photoshop. And then we'll we'll connect with you again. Shouldn't be a, a problem because I understand you might want to go over and start learning about the product beforehand for sure. Mm -hmm. All righty. Great. Uh, here, I just started sharing again to show you the live chat it's right here. Okay. You have access to it through the My Class page. It's only available here. You have access to our FAQs and if you need a live agent too. All right. So, well, Catherine, I see that you added your name there. Does it mean that you ran into the same situation that you also would like access, early access? No, I put it there because in the chat it said put your email and address. So that's the <laughs> only Oh, no, that was for because <laughs> LinkedIn. In the chat and said, okay, they want my email and address. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that happen. was because Lindsay uh, didn't have access to to our product yet, and so we are just. Or not everybody try. knows where I am; they can contact me if they need to. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, like Monica was saying, we're always here for you, and let us know if you have questions. And it will be very important by the end of this year that you give us a feedback on how this year went for you and what we could do better next year. We would love to hear feedbacks from teachers. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you for thank being here. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, you for being here. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you very much.